Moin, moin, moin. We're going to the beach. So this is a photograph I shot back in Australia, uh, in Perth actually, by the beach. I'm going to break down and uh, walk you through how I got the look and then how we had this beauty, those beautiful origami CG butterflies. So let's go for a splash. We jump right into the raw files. I'm just gonna toggle this to how it was shot in camera. So if I toggle forward and back, you will see that there are a few adjustments here. We have the sun coming from the left and we have another light right up here in the corner that was predominantly there to fill in the shadows because if you want to use the sun as your key light you want to expose for the sun her her left arm but also her standing leg here right now how dark they get this is how most of her body would have looked like if i hadn't used this um strobe light here we got rid of the strobe light by having a healing brush that pretty, you pretty much just click on the strobe light drag all the way to the right in my case so we get rid of the tripod element as well and the healing brush does the rest the major adjustments are happening in basic and color mixture let's go with the basic first we see that we have a great deal of exposure adjustment here it's very bright in comparison to what the final final looks the exposure is down by a full stop here and that makes sense the contrast is increased a little bit the clarity has gone down a little bit um cranked up the vibrance a bit to just get a little bit more a little bit more uh, color in there we adjusted the brightness of the of the sky for a nice teal the cold and warm look you crank up the blues you crank up the, the warm colors as well and that is what we have here open this up and if I toggle between the two pictures, you see there's still a little bit of difference here, especially this area here got really dark. Again, I don't want random parts of the image to have more contrast than my subject. And the trick for that was relatively easy. I created another layer and I color picked my sky and then I just used a gradient and dragged that over the image to create haze haze in the color of my sky and that just blends everything nicely together the most complicated part here is that you have to cut out the girl so that you can just drag the gradient over the image without having her affected so i think it's time we add uh, the butterflies so here we are in blender select everything and delete i create a plane we just go wireframe mode i'm gonna chuck this into the collection and rename this collection butterflies because it's going to be a butterfly my rough wing shape a little bit i think if you have a bit of imagination you might be able to see a wing here already <laughs> ah that should be it okay then we select every second edge and push these up i might just shape this a little bit so we go into proportional editing and just a um, bit bigger just a little bit more of an organic feel in here i just select all of them and just place them right to where where the origin is everything right now is a bit flat and i want to give it curvature that will greatly help you to make it look a bit more organic but also to catch more light and then we can already use this one here and with again proportional editing on i'm just going to give this a bit of curvature and i might do the same with this one here and just select everything and bring it back down to the origin And there is pretty much our wing. Nice. Um, we zoom in here and you see it's just giving us a little bit of thickness. And we also now gonna give this a mirror modifier. 
we have to not go with x we want to go horizontally with y seeing it like this i might just go back into edit mode and just this technique will also be used in the end to create the wing flaps the poses right you can see flippity flappity it's already a butterfly and it's going nuts the object the material editor so here's our material press ctrl t we go into the UV editor. This is the very first image that you see there um, for the Umami Origami project. It was all like a custom made paper dress. It looked beautiful and it got completely wrecked in the wind because it was paper. That was fun. So let's select the butterfly here. We go onto polygons, press U, unwrap. There it is. And in the UV editor, press A for selecting everything and we drag it over here. Just adjust the perspective a bit. And we scale it down and do we like that maybe rotate it a little bit yeah why not this looks good i like it we pretty much textured our butterfly already let's call butterfly bf1 bf best friends best fly butter friend all right pull yourself together new collection i name this set i'm going to import my photograph now images as planes if you don't see that go preferences add-ons type images and select import images as planes Gee, i think every tutorial will explain you how to enable this add-on <laughs> super important here it is we want this to be a emission material create a camera as well both are set and then this background and this is my camera the camera is looking into the right direction already however it has a funky angle i don't know why select the background our field of view of the camera is not lining up with the aspect ratio of our image the easiest way to figure out what you want to set this to is by selecting the background image and there we get our our resolution right here it's 3012 by 4518 and we're gonna do this 3012 by 4518 beautiful so we can um, get started with our butterfly which is outrageously huge right now one divided by 100 for the scale and we have a butterfly that is but three by five centimeters now that looks good Control a apply the scale push it in a bit oh, i see the lady at the moment is also quite tall before we adjust camera and lady to each other again i'm just gonna go for big butterflies place this butterfly on her on the here I will, we will create shadow catchers so wherever we have butterflies actually landing on her those butterflies will create a shadow let's duplicate it a bit have the camera go on the camera settings turn on depth of field select the butterfly on her here here's our depth of field and you can see already we have subtle things i might just let's go 1.4 now for the butterflies i just go into the wireframe mode right now so i don't get distracted by anything else Keep in mind that this is about readability so you rather go for a butterfly that has a repeating silhouette than a butterfly that uh, looks like crumbled paper shift s hold it cursor to select it that will place the uh, 3d cursor to the origin of the butterfly then you roughly line up the camera so in that case i only need to press r now oh hold on we also set the rotation to 3d cursor and you see what happens it just rotates based on your perspective and you keep an eye on your how does the silhouette read we have the sun coming uh from the from the from the left and we remember we had up here we had our little box our little uh, flashlight that was shooting right down here to fill in the the shadows so that is what we're going to do now it's a nice and flat angle from a top view we want to give it a little bit of 
and angle towards the face rather than coming 100% from the side. And uh, let's crank this up until we see the butterflies being lit up. Some nice shadows going down, going happen down here. What I want to tweak now is um, how these butterflies behave. So just uh, Control B, get a selection of the image. Head back into the shader editor. Get a bit of subsurface scattering going on. So let's just hide the background for now. I just need to see very strong right now. So we might just um, stick to 0 0.01 for now. So let's create another light. This time it's not going to be a sun, but an area light. 10 centimeters. Uh, let's do tw 20 because our scene scale is a bit off anyway. And I pointed at her face, probably down a bit more. Beautiful. Strobe. I just uh, reduced the angle a bit. 180 degrees is a bit much. We might go down around 120. We have to increase the power a little bit there. I want to make sure that this matches roughly the brightness I see on her face right here. All right. This starts to feel right. Maybe 120 watts in my case. Sunlight strobe light probably do a bit too much to be honest i wonder if the strobe is just a bit too crazy there yeah let's just dial this down to 80. okay the only thing that bothers me a little bit now is every now and then we have a butterfly that has a shadow in there that is really like dark and uh, sort of moody even here it's too dark it's too desaturated in a way and that is because wherever we have the sunlight and the strobe light not reaching we will get blackness and that's not what we want because if we look at our image we have we should have a lot of blue fill light actually so we go into the color of our world click the color thing click the color picker pick blue and that is way too strong right now but we got rid of the black already. So I quickly bring this down and then we just slightly dial it up until we reach levels that we like. Potentially a bit too green, to be honest, slightly more on the, uh, on the blue side. And I will reduce the saturation a fair bit. So see how all those black areas are now filled in with blue spill light especially down here it works very well for these guys here so the last thing that is uh, missing now is our shadow catchers for that we create a new collection here just go for an icosphere because it's fun feedback now roughly the size of her head there And we set this in the visibility shadow catcher. We have our main layer and we are going to create a second layer shadow. In the shadow layer, all we want to see is the shadows. Oh, hold on. The butterflies have to be set to hold out. I also notice that our in Film needs to be set to transparent if we don't want to have all that blue in there. So this will be hard to see for you. But if I just so focus around here, I go back to main. And here we want to disable shadow. Uh, but we don't need the background image. We want to disable that from rendering. So all we want to see here is our butterflies. Shadow layer, if I now say render image. we will get those two images. All right, so with our renders done, we're just going to drag and drop them into Photoshop. There they are. The shadow that is right under that butterfly there. Subtle, but it's there because we don't need highlights under here. I added an exposure layer on the butterflies. I toggle it on and off here right now just to 
bump up the exposure a bit and also a second layer just for the ones that are lower to the ground. I also gave the butterflies subtle blur. I'm not sure if you can see that on YouTube. The blur I gave it was, it was about 0.3 pixels because they seemed to be a little bit too sharp in comparison to the photograph. And I just lined that up so they don't stand out as CG elements all that much. So that concludes our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's a very elegant piece we have here. And if you feel like this is something you want to dive deeper into, I highly encourage you to do so. It's very good to uh, get away from the computer and do something in the real world and vice versa, where you just find trust in your abilities to save things ditch in the digital world right save it in post <laughs> and i think that has value and it will greatly help you dealing with people and dealing with your own emotions <laughs> until then see you next time